Hunt.com and it's a hot summer day in Northern Virginia and I'm going to take this time to show you six of my favorite hacks for bank fishing. These are six of my favorite tricks that will make bank fishing a little bit easier, making your fishing a little bit better. If you've ever been fishing for the shore and wondered how deep the water is, I'm going to show you how to find out. Okay, you're going to build your own depth finder. You need a water bottle, a sliding lead, and a bead. That's all you need. Uh, I like to use those little uh, sliders with the clips and a, about a four ounce lead. Open the, take the cap off the water bottle and crush it so about 90% of the air is squeezed out of the bottle and put the cap back on so it's watertight. Okay, you want the lead weight to be able to sink the water bottle. It should look about like this. Okay, you chuck it out into the water and you reel, tighten up the line and the water bottle sinks down to the lead without dragging the lead. Okay, that's the key thing. You want the water bottle to float, but then uh, sink when you pull it, reel it in. And then when you let up the bale, it pops up. So you go and you cast out to wherever you want to measure the depth of the water. And when it hits the water, you reel the bottle down to the lead until you feel the lead dragging on the bottom. Then once that happens, you flip open the bale and you carefully measure out how much line it takes for the water bottle to pop back up to the surface. Now, the distance between your reel seat to the first eyelet is a real great measuring tool. Like This is about two feet on this rod, so it takes two uh, lengths of that. That's four feet. So pop. I know it's four feet deep out where I cast it. Okay, so that's how you can measure the depth anywhere from the bank. And when you reel it in, you'll see gunk hung up on the lead. Pay attention to that. Like this is decaying leaf matter, so I know that's what's on the bottom out there. Casting to the same spot every time is a really important skill when bank fishing. If you cast to a certain you spot that, and you get a fish and he gets doesn't hook up, you want to cast right back out there and, and get the same spot every time. Whenever you want to hit the same spot every time, use your line clip. Now your line clip is the little tab on the side of the reel. Simply clip your line in and then reel up. Okay, That's all you have to do. Use the line clip. And so when you reel in and then cast the second time, your line will go out. And when you run out of line, it'll hit the line clip and go ding, and your lead drops down at the exact same distance as it was before. And then you can simply unclip it and put your rod in the rod holders and wait for the fish. And when you get ready to re reel in, clip it back up, reel it in. And you can use this to hit every single time. You can also use this to get close to snacks. So you can clip up and then add a few feet and clip up, add a few feet, and clip up till you get right up to where you want to cast. Nothing's more frustrating than having some idiot in a boat run into your line. So if you want to protect your line from boats or get it out of the wind, sink your main line. By getting it down on the bottom quicker, you keep it out of the way. You can do that by using a back lead. This is a little do-it-yourself back lead. You take a one or two ounce lead, you put it on a paper clip like this, and once you've already cast it out, attach the lead by the paper clip to your main line. You should have it on the inside of the paper clip so that it's harder to accidentally come off and lose your lead. Send your lead out over the water, and once it gets about far enough, Open your bale and let the line dry, drop down to the bottom. Now your main line's safe from boaters, it's out of the wind, and it's pinned to the bottom so that fish can't detect it by running into it. When you reel in your main line, simply unclip the lead and cast it back out, then reclip the back lead. Everyone knows that you can use a forked stick as a cheap do-it-yourself rod holder. However, we also know that if a big fish comes along, it can rip that rod right out of the rod holder and send it into the water. It's a great way to lose a rod and a good fish. So if you want to make it so that a fish can't steal your rod, simply get a second stick, cut off all the knots and make it nice and smooth so there's nothing for the line to snag on, and sink that into the ground right in front of the reel seat. The second stick allows you to fish with your drag nice and tight. Just make sure that that second stick is straight and smooth with no snags on it so that you can just walk over and pick your rod straight up and get it out of the rod holder without any fuss. The next time your wife forces you to go to Ikea, make sure you pick up an $8 live well, also known as a collapsible laundry basket. These full-in Ikea laundry baskets are great. They collapse down pretty small and they have little Velcro straps that keep them collapsed and they also have a Velcro uh, uh, latch on the lid. Pretty much you just 
open it up, put it in the water, and put a rock in the bottom, and boom, you've got a great live well. Spacious, you can hold lots of bluegill, pretty good sized fish, no problem. Keeps them aerated, keeps them cool, keeps them alive. It's great for bait fishing from the bank using live bait, or you can even keep your catch there to keep them alive and fresh. And as you can see, it's plenty of room, does a really good job, and it's only eight bucks collapses and puts in your tackle bag no problem or store it on your boat whatever you want nice and simple nice and easy it's the poor man's keep net so once you've caught a load of fish of course your hands stink your bait towel stinks your live well stinks everything smells like fish so first thing go and wash your hands soap and water dry them off and once they're all dry then they, if they still smell spray them with windex or any sort of ammonia based glass cleaner the ammonia works really well to like kill the bacteria that makes it sm smell. So once your hands are dry, just rub them around really good and just let them let the Windex kind of soak in and do its work and then just wipe it off. That's it. Windex really helps uh, get rid of the, the fish stink after your hands are dried if they still smell. You can also spray your bait towel with it once it's dry, try to get some of the smell out of it. And it also works good on your keep net. Uh, it, uh, because it undoubtedly will start to smell like fish. So after it's uh, dry, spray it down with a little Windex, and then you're good. If you like those videos, check out some of our other great videos, including how to make your own fishing bells and how to make the ultimate rod holder with a flashlight and cutting board. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.